Ladies and gentlemen, children of the interwebs out there, especially the strong style, nerd strong style cinephile Stargirl, two part season one finale. It is here. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> Man, we saw some things, we learned some things, so let's geek about it for a scant, scant few minutes. Not gonna go through blow by blow, beat for beat, just kind of let's talk about what we learned and what I liked, what I didn't like about the episode. And let's look forward to the season one finale. Now, what we learned is the ISAs full plan there. Using Brainwave to send out this massive, just mind-altering signal that's going to make everybody act like the way the ISA wants, think like the way the ISA wants, and we find out from their manifesto later in the episode that it's actually not, you know, bad. It's charitable. It's altruistic. They want universal health care. They want to eliminate racism and discrimination on the basis of gender and, and, and sexual orientation and creed and, and just all that, just other stuff. They just want to make the world a better place. Lofty goals. They're just potentially going to kill like 25 million people in, in doing it because their, their mental machine only works on fully developed minds, adults, and those who are strong enough to naturally resist the dump that Brainwave is giving them, the mental dump, are likely going to die. So while it's, it's a lofty goal, you're going to kill 25 million people in doing it, superheroes are going to have a problem with that. And everybody comes together, springs into action, to stop them. That's basically the gist of things. On the ISA side, they're so close to pulling things off. Icicle 6, Sportsmaster, and Tigress to go take care of Stargirl and Pat, which again brings me to what I liked about the episode. What I liked about the episode was Tigress going after Stargirl in her home, and then Sportsmaster going after Pat at the uh, pit stop. Now, it, it, Pat and uh, Sportsmaster's little fight came after um, Mike and Pat kind of had it out. Mike is basically just tired at this point of just being left out. He knows stuff is going on, and he's just so tired of being left out of it and just treated like a kid, like a baby. And just although at this point in time he just doesn't see past his anger, he's just which is rightfully so what he's feeling to this point. Uh, Pat's about to bring him in. Pat's about to read him in and show him what's been going on, show him why they're about to just go camping in the middle of, you know, the school year, which is really just go out to a cabin and get to safety from the ISA. And he blows up at Pat, again, rightfully so, and then storms off. Next thing you know, Sportsmaster comes out as, you know, just crush a croc, and he knows that Pat is, you know, Stripe and has the robot and everything, and he's just playing with him. One of the people on Reddit kind of said, wondered why he didn't come out in costume like Tigress did when she went to the house. And, and another person commented that Sportsmaster is a sadist. They both are. Clearly he is. He just wanted to play with Pat. He knows that Pat is Stripe and has these connections, but Pat doesn't know that he knows. So it's kind of like this game at first until you get into their fight. Meanwhile, Courtney and Barbara are packing up things at the house. Tigress breaks in and attacks, and then it's Courtney against Tigress with Barbara caught in the middle. And we get to one of the negative things about the show and just the wire foo. Now, early on it was kind of slight. This episode they ratcheted up the wire foo just uh, to like the nth degree. And it's just, when they let the stunt man just go and go and just throw down like the way stunt men do, um, it's good. It's awesome, it's shot well, it's great stuff. When they bust out all that wire foo, it just, it just pulls you, it's jarred for me, personally. It's jarring for me. It pulls me out of the scene about, it. it just, like I know it's a superhero show, and I know they're supposed to, be doing, supposed to be doing superhuman things, but just the way that it's, it's, it's carried out, it's just, it's jarring, and it's not necessary, I don't think, to the degree that they do it now. It doesn't fully kill the scene, doesn't fully kill the show, but it's just, they could do with a little less of it. So, Pat, through help from Mike who comes back and Mike's trusty drill that he uses to drill a hole in Sportsmaster's back and it's about to kill his dad basically. Um, they beat Sportsmaster, Courtney manages to beat Tigers, they convene together, they go to the cabin, next thing you know the Junior JSA shows up and then Sir Justin comes bringing a, a bountiful feast for everybody in KFC. So they get together, put their heads together and think of, of what they're going to do about the ISA and the key to it is in the journal, Rick's dad's journal, which through Pat's help, they figure out that the, the last number that he needed had to do with 67 Mustang. 
of his dad. This unlocks uh, the code, which the code is the layout of the tunnels. And Rick uh, theorizes that's why his parents were killed, because Outer Man had mapped out all the tunnels and all the connections and everything. So everything the ISA was doing underground in their secret base, Rick had, Rick's dad, Rex, had found out about it, laid it out for him. So Rick lays it out for everybody. As uh, Beth scan, uh, used goggles to scan the, the code, brings up the, uh, the, the vast labyrinth that is under the city, as well as the giant uh, satellite that they're building, which if you look at it, and I saw it in the, the promo for it, that it was just basically like this like Fox Men, you know, Cerebro uh, ripoff homage, whatever you want to call it. It looked like Cerebro from the Fox X-Men movies. <laughs> so they split into groups and they go to stop them. Meanwhile, Icicle is disappointed to know that Sports Master and Tigress failed. He calls in um, Virtuoso, Fiddler 2, whatever. I mean, she doesn't, you know, Principal Bowen. She's not named in it. After Principal Bowen has a heart-to-heart -heart with her son who's being bullied, she basically tells him to be violent against the, the kids that are bullying him, maybe setting him up to be a future fiddler or a future virtuoso. She shows up at the, the Dugan house and says that she's there to basically pick up Tigers and Sportsmaster Slack. And then she makes a flippant comment about Artemis and their parental care, and Tiger shoots her. And that feeds to the idea that what's going to enable these kids to beat the ISA is for them to cannibalize themselves, to turn on themselves. And I'm wondering if Brainwave in the season finale is just, if he's got any sort of end game type of thing that he's going to pull like a last minute, um, you know, heel turn on Icicle or Icicle is going to turn on him. One of the, I think them going at it ultimately is going to, what's going to help them prevail in the end as they beat the ISA. As the kids um, go forth in their little groups, Barbara goes with Beth, to um, the project, uh, uh, the you know America job place, and they attempt to hack into um, ISA's network and figure out what's going on. They end up finding they stumble onto Gambler and his hack. They find the timer that's counting down to what they think is the activation of the machine. But what's actually, they find out that they have like 30 minutes from when the timer hit 30. Um, to stop what's happening, the, the brain dump that Brainwave is doing. They have 30 minutes to stop it or it's going to be permanent. Next thing you know, Barbara's got this blue electricity in her eyes as she's, her mind is taken over. Justin's in the tunnel with uh, Rick. He gets taken over and then Stripe. Pat is in Stripe with Courtney. He gets taken over and then attacks Courtney and that's the cliffhanger ending. I'm assuming that maybe Barbara's gonna attack Beth. So Justin is going to attack Rick and that's gonna be some of the action we see in part two. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff's going on. Uh, there was some good action in the episode, some good smaller moments between like Mike and Courtney and Mike talking about maybe if the staff had picked him, if it would work. And then he tries to, you know, pick it up and it doesn't work for him. And he says, well, my dad, you know, built Stripe and he did other things without superpowers. Maybe I could go up and do something like him for the JSA. In comics, we know that Mike is in, at some point in Stripe, so I'm wondering if they'll do that in the future, should the show last that long. It's just, it was fun, it was a fun episode, had some good scenes, had some corny wire food, which and I don't like. Um, had everybody come together and uh, just rally together, which was cool to see um, the Junior JSA coming together with Barbara in the mix, Mike's in the mix, like everybody knows everything. Everything's out in the open, everything is just, um, everybody knows everything. Honesty, it's all out in the open for the heroes. Good stuff. Um, I'm just excited to see where they go from here. Like I said, I don't think that there's been a waste of time episode. There hasn't been that. I mean, shows, when these streaming shows have 13 episodes, that just that lull in the middle. This show has not suffered from that. I dare somebody to bring me an example of that because I really do not think, I believe with all my heart, that they have not had a bad, just filler, stupid episode that was totally unnecessary to the overall plot, like some of the Netflix shows have had, like some other shows that do the streaming 13 episode format. Stargirl has just built and built and built and built and built every episode, you know, to this point. 
Will they stick the land? That's the thing. Will they stick the landing? That remains to be seen. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm here for it. Six days from now, we'll find out what happens. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Stargirl. What do you guys out there think? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me on social media. Talk to me there. Talk to me here. And Stargirl. It's, just, it's the best superhero show going. It's the best superhero show in the last handful of years. If you're not watching it, there's something wrong with you. Catch up now on DC Universe. Watch some other shows. Read some comics on the app. It's a great app. Catch it now before it's dead, pretty much. But that's a conversation for another day. Anyway, let us keep it.